By the way, wanted to ask you guys, what do you guys think of the shirt? Angelus got this for me for Father's Day, and this is my first video showing it. Uh, so, there we go. <clears throat> hey guys, you know it's the Joe Jaguar Show here. I wanted to show you guys this telescope here. How many of you guys have seen this? How many of you guys have used it? I would like to know. Now, I think this came out, I used to have one, and maybe, I'm gonna say maybe the year 2000 to 2005, these came out roughly. So basically this was made, I think, uh, you know, as a portable scope, sort of similar to what uh, is on the market now, the mini Dobbs. So, could this be the ultimate camping, cottaging, backpacking telescope? Let's find out. Okay, so this is your average 80 millimeter F5 refractor, short tube. They have been uh, made for a very long time, over 30 years and longer. Um, now, some of you guys might be thinking 80 millimeters to go camping or cottaging or in the dark, deep sky uh, areas is not big enough, but it's, it's decent, I would say. Just to give you guys a reference. Now, at one time, I took this to a, a green zone. Now, back then, I didn't know it was a green zone. I just knew it was about an hour and a half away from a white light uh, city. Uh, Toronto's is a white zone. And I, so I didn't know um, the light pollution metered at that time, but this was my first time getting to a dark skies since I got into the hobby. So just to give you guys an idea, I had a 16 inch Dobsonian in a white zone. And I brought this guy to a green zone. And let me tell you, this did about a thousand times better than that 16 inch in a white zone. For instance, the Veil Nebula, I could not see that um, in a white zone at all. However, with a scope like this, and there was no ambient light at all, so it was like pitch black. I still remember it. Um, I couldn't see nothing. Uh, but, you know, after 10 minutes, we adjusting to the light. So the Veil Nebula was one. The Andromeda Galaxy. Now, in the 16 inch in a white zone, you could see Andromeda Galaxy, but all you would see is just a very faint core. Now, with this guy in the green zone, I could see the full shape of it. Easy. So, just just to show you guys if you get if you go to dark areas an 80 millimeter could be an okay start now of course if you get, could bring bigger then even better but just saying uh it is okay start so i think they made these back then as the ultra portable uh camping cottaging type of scope so again it's an 80 millimeter f5 there's a lot of variants out there orion sky watcher um, Mead made them, Celestron made them, whole bunch. Actually, my first 80 mil F5 was a Celestron when I went to go visit um, Mexico, Cancun. I brought that along. Now, this version here is on an EQ1, but tabletop. However, what's neat is this could actually be, uh, you could take the legs off and take that screw off, and it actually can go on to if you have a full size eq1 this can go on that too so if you don't like the tabletop versions this version can go on the full height tripod as well um, you did have to buy that extra but you could have best of both worlds having a uh, you know portable camping scope or tabletop scope or uh, you know put on the full height tripod now what i like about this over the mini daub versions is that it still comes with the um, let me angle it towards you guys. It still comes with the slow motion controls, which means you can basically polar align this guy, or even if you don't, can't see a Polaris, you can just point this guy, if you know where the north is, and then you could just start driving, uh, start using it. Also, being it's an EQ mount, you can buy one of those little clock drives they're like, I don't know, 60 bucks 
a Canadian, maybe 40 American, put it on here and it, it, it will track. And then there you go, you have best of both worlds. Now, maybe some of you guys might say, ah, but you gotta carry around a nine or 10 pound weight with it, so camping might be a little, uh, you know, you're carrying a little bit extra weight. Getting also a scope that can manually track. Um, so you gotta weigh both options. Now, also, um, maybe what you could do, if you want a little bit more aperture, they used to sell at one time, you, you used to see like a 90 millimeter F5. Almost don't see that size, uh, almost like never anymore. Uh, however, maybe you can squeeze a 102 F5 on here type of thing, and, and that's probably about as big as you can get. Now, as far as a reflector, remember, Orion and other companies sell a four and a half inch short tube, the F5 versions with the parabolic mirror, that do ride, and they do sell it on the EQ1, and this is EQ1 as well, so let's say camping-wise, you want something a little bit more aperture, um, you know, you can put it on something like that, and there's a perfect camping scope. Um, now, of course, I do have to mention, now these days, we, we do have the tabletop uh, variants, which is, you know, like Zummel, Orion, every company basically has the four, the four to five inch uh, tabletop, um, even up to six inch. Now, I don't know about if a six inch is gonna be portable, but maybe if you have uh, enough room in, in the car, uh, you could try. Now, this one here, I don't know if, um, originally it came with both. You got the 90 degree, uh, which is better for the nighttime viewing, and then the 45 degree prism, which is better for the daytime viewing. Uh, again, being that it's a short tube refractor, it's gonna be almost like a binocular field of view um, type of thing. It's F5, so you're gonna get a huge wide field of views. And uh, so you can use it, why not use it for the daytime? If you're up north camping, cottaging, take a look at the lake, bird watching type of thing, just switch your diagonal. Uh, this model did come two inch and a quarter right pieces and a barlow. That's really all you need. Now, I really liked it. So when I saw this guy, I wanted to get it and I wanted to show you guys. And I wanted to ask, have you guys ever seen it? Have you guys ever used it? And what do you think about it? I think it's kind of like a little neat. Um, I remember too, for a lot of new people think, you know, uh, that you have to get away to, do, you know, dark skies to view the planets. And that's incorrect. The, the planets are so bright that they cut through almost any type of light pollution. So even in the white zone, it's you can easily see the planets. So again, guys, if you guys didn't know, you can view the planets virtually anywhere. So if you're in a white zone and you're gonna go to a dark zone, you don't, I mean, you, what I would recommend is you don't have to uh, or you don't need to look at the planets. So this guy is not made to look at high planetary viewing. However, it's good for low power sweeping, extended large objects, what it's made for. So if you can get to a dark site, even this will be decent, um, depending how dark the site is. Is there any ambient light shining on you, that type of thing. But that's what it's made for. So again, uh, you don't need huge, telescopes and if you get to a dark zone uh, so this would be probably decent again I wouldn't personally use it if I, if I was able to get to a, a dark skies let's say I wouldn't be uh, viewing the planets at that time look at things that you can't see in the light polluted zone so that's what you should do now that's my opinion if you want to look at the planets when you're in a dark zone type of thing or maybe if um, you're with friends and you just want to show them the planets, you know, it'll do okay, not great. It might interest them enough uh, in, in the hobby maybe, or they might find it cool. But yeah, when I get away to dark skies, I'm not looking at the planets and double stars. I'm looking at the deep sky stuff, uh, the stuff that I can't see at the city. So anyway, what do you guys think about this guy? Um, and that's what it is. So I just wanted to pick it up, show it to you guys because I, it was, I, I liked it. Now you can buy this mount, Orion still sells it. Now, as far as I know, Orion is the only one that sells this mini tabletop mount. And Canadian, it's $130 uh, and then 20 bucks shipping. I think 
Now, don't quote me wrong because it could always change, but I think in US, I think it might be $89 now. I remember it like a year or two ago being $69, but of course prices have um, skyrocketed uh, this last two years. But anyway, that's what this guy is. What do you guys think of this as being the ultimate uh, camping, cottaging, or maybe backpacking uh, scope? Do you like it? Would you use it? And if not, you know, what would be better for you? Do you like, would you rather have the mini uh, daubs, uh, the reflectors, the four or five models versus uh, an EQ, even though you don't have slow motion controls or, you know, or would you prefer, you know, maybe put a four and a half inch reflector here and still have the convenience of the uh, slow motion controls type of thing. So that's it. Joe Jaguar out, like, comment, and subscribe.